Mm. One of my greatest inventions. It really is. It's you boys! Alright, welcome back. Happy hour. A quick sixer podcast. Our our finest hours, I would have to say, Drew. I believe you are correct. So after I'm done pouring this oh. tasty, tasty. Oh, I don't know. If Speaking you of see, tasty, I see it. Oh, hit me with them notes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right to the motherfucking you know edge. <laughs> Damn, you boy singing. It's a, it's turn, turn into a sing cast. Mm-hmm. Oh, can't let the the after draft. You gotta get oh, that. Oh, I in. never left the after draft. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Anyways, all right, Drew. What are we drinking on this one? Ooh, I'm gonna go ooh. first. Go ahead. I got that. Um, go for it. By uh, I got Rogue Ales from Newport, Oregon. Bat Squatch, like a Sasquatch, but a bat squatch. That's a bat squatch. Hazy India Pale Ale. It's that six point seven. Mm. Um, I'm not even going to lie. I really like this beer. I bought it the other day, and I ended up having most of the six back in the one day. Um, that's, I ended up saving a couple for you know, you know, special occasions, what? No, just for the show. That's oh. the only reason I drink the whole thing. <laughs> Bro, speaking of going too quick, which this one will definitely go too quick. Ooh. I got your previous sponsor. Ooh, if you remember. Ooh. Golden Shout out. Road shouts Shout out, to out. Road. and at the time they didn't have this beer. No, hundred percent they didn't have this beer. Mango no. cart. What we got? Mango cart. Oh, what we got? What's this it, what's shit. A B V. Okay, I'll, try, I'll tell you in a second. Okay, A B V. Where's it on the can? It's a it's a light beer. I'm being honest. Oh, we got four two. No, it's less. Less it's four. That shit cider. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> what four? This shit ain't a beer. You got beach beer right now, <laughs> bro. It's got so, that beach beer. It's Actually, so that would good. be perfect on the beach right now. I know. Oh it, my god! Speaking with them, of with I, them, uh, what they've got? Uh, I mean, look, it's got on the branding. Oh, that's Santa Monica. Look at that shit. That's Damn, they man. know about. They know this is a beach beer. This is the tastiest. Oh. This is the tastiest fruit beer. I am not into fruit beer. I like you know me. I like Stella. I like the classics. I like mm-hmm. a beer that tastes like a beer. But this light little motherfucker right here though. Ooh, Drew sipping. Mm. It's, it's tasty. Like, <laughs> Bruh, Gold Road, what is going on? Are y'all sponsoring again? Because I am ready to talk about Mango oh, Cart. Oh, me with the Mango Cart. Oh, it is man. so you good. Know, Meg will be into the Mango Cart. She love Mango. I know. Catherine's the same way. I mean, she don't like beer at all, but I give her a Mango Cart, she's into it. Ooh, I'm a, oh, okay, okay. Mangoes. Do they have um, Mango They have Golden Roads in, in stores over there? In Nashville? Or no? Because I know they sold they they sold their brand to the bigger brand, you know. They sold it to Anheuser Busch, I think, exactly. or maybe the Coors Company. I don't Not know. Not Anheuser. One of those. Oh yeah. So they should be um, out there, right? They're probably in like a craft shop or something. Yeah. But like, none of that. I don't really feel safe going in any of those things right now. I really want to, but well, I don't, you know don't feel safe. They're going basically where? like going to a gas station, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. I have to go check. Maybe I go check tomorrow. Yeah. Get you a mango mm, cart. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, no. Stop. Stop. Boy, acting Ooh, extra right now. Squash. <laughs> Boy, the best act, squash. The best squash. Extra right now. The best squash. <laughs> Bro, what uh, are we talking about today? The, oh, well, you know, Drew, I got some I got some hot takes for you on this one. Go for it. Um. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah. This mango cart's not lasting for 10 minutes. Bro, I'm gonna tell you right now, this shit ain't lasting at all. I got a backup, backup local boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that you know, if they don't hook up a show sooner or later, <laughs> you're gonna, gonna have to talk about them. <laughs> no, I'm not, because we're gonna keep going. You love them too you know, much. Perseverance. If there's anything I am, it's oh, you are persistent as fuck. Yes, there we go. If you I'm anything, I'm persistent. persistent. 
bro will text so, you about something until you beg on your knees. <laughs> Please, stop. dear God, stop texting me. I got you. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. See, I need it. I need an answer. That's the thing. <laughs> um, so either way, I don't even care at this point. But yeah, speaking of the bass squash, you know what I'm saying? Go for it. The bass squash. First topic of the day. Scary movies and favorite scary movie like horror icon okay mm, mm-hmm. so this little scary motherfucker right here is basquash mm-hmm. he ugly as hell you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. ugly boy but kind of cute i would touch him you wouldn't touch, know. you wouldn't pet him um, you wouldn't no, scratch him behind his ear the hell nah maybe a back scratch or something uh, you know anyway, it's uh, grocery back there no i just he couldn't bite me or scratch me while the back oh, there you you're, right, you're right you're right you're right but anyway um uh I, we were thinking we were talking about this because uh, on a different show we were talking about nightmares. Mm-hmm. Got me thinking about scary, scary things. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we're talking about scary, scary boys. We're just mm-hmm. calling them scary boys, right? Because right. mostly boys. There's barely any uh, horror movie like uh, scary girls. You mm-hmm. know, maybe Carrie, mm-hmm. maybe a couple others. Monster. You know? Yeah. Bride What's of Frankenstein, that? maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I can think. Of, you know what? Go ahead. What? Like go. Well, you scary. Well, uh, you know what I think of when I think of scary, like female is like grudge, and uh, it's always always those like scary Asian influence movies. Oh, oh sure. Like yeah, you know, the Ring. And, that's yeah, yeah. That's that's stinky sewer girl. She got some. She mm. got some scaries. <laughs> you talk about the well. <laughs> the sewer girl. Yeah. No, no, no. The one from the, from the TV coming out all soft and wet. <laughs> oh. You know she just came from the bottom of your sink. Bro, how did that? <laughs> she just, bleh, came from your toilet drain. I don't understand. All hair. Got to pull her ass out. Bro, ever since that movie, every mm-hmm. horror movie wants their horror character to do the crab walk. And I cannot stand it. That nasty Not ass crab. Not that. You know what I'm talking about? That crab walk yeah, that's down the dude, stairs. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. No, that shit's freaky. Yeah. But no, no. On that the was ceiling in, and uh, shit. That was in. Uh, in the garage. <laughs> No, 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 no. Before? That was in, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Why am I blanking right now? Who's doing a crab walk? Ain't uh, nobody doing a crab walk. Er, yeah, all the, man. Yeah, yeah, all no, the no, no, horror no. Movies Selma also. Blair. Selma Blair. I don't know. Yeah, oh, yes, you oh. Do. Wait, Exorcist? Yeah, it's in the Exorcist. Mm. She walk out all crazy. Mm. How you going to say, how are you going to say that? Name and not think of the Exorcist right Someone away. Blair? I don't know. Like you know, Wait, my ha- brain works weird. You know, my brain weird. don't work though. Because I don't. Work right. Like t- to be honest, I don't know who Selma Blair is, and I don't even know if she's in the Exorcist. But the fact that you confirmed she's, it for me, she's Reagan in the Exorcist. See, I know, I know the girl's name too. That's the girl. Yeah, that's the girl. All I name. know is the Exorcist. Uh, oh, that funny movie. story. No, nah, I'll tell you that story off. Right. Um. Anyway, <laughs> that um. I, you you asked me. I think a question. you could probably guess that story. But, but you asked me a question that so one of my favorite horror yeah. movies Baba Duke. Really? Yeah, you ever see this? Yeah. It's it's really fucking good. And I I like it for a lot of different reasons, but I will say if I'm going with a movie that fucked me up, like seriously mm. horror Exorcist is the number is the one. one. And I'm going to tell you why. Because your boy did not watch it in a movie theater. Obviously, it came out a long time ago. Your boy didn't watch it, you know, a normal way. I watched it yeah. for the first time in 2017 in my bed with a laptop in between me and my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. We watched it on a laptop, and that still fucked me up. Like, I could not, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. And the, for me, that's what a horror movie is supposed to do. Like, The Shining, obviously yeah. classic. It fucks you up. Exorcist fucks you up. These horror movies, like the the slashers, are great for what they do, but they don't fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? They're just mm-hmm. like, oh shit, like you shouldn't have sex or you're going to get murdered by Jason. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's basically the thing, right? Yeah. Um. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you with one. Go for um, it. Have you seen? All right, so freaky movies. We'll just go with one. Um, have you seen Hereditary? 
Oof. Yeah. Bruh. Oh, don't even do. <laughs> don't do the wah wah. Dude, don't do the wah wah. If Bruh, you listen to this, and the, you're not the, watching the sound me. effect. The sound effect, though, in the in the car. I know <laughs> what you're talking about, bro. It I goes bah, bah. like, and you're like, "What the fuck was that?" That's the worst. Anyway, that movie's fucked up. Also, this this shit right here, for for you viewers. Oh no! Stop it. <laughs> but why Pat trying to terrify himself before he goes to bed tonight? Oh shit, oh, bro! Why you gotta tell me I'm home alone? Yeah. Damn, home alone ass. Anyways, but horror icon icons go. Mm-hmm. I got. I have a sweet spot. I know it's weird, but I have a sweet spot for the Scream movies. Ooh, I love them. Like yeah. I love them. Scream? As far as like background noise during like high school and college and stuff. Yeah. I it was like random stuff like the American Pie movies, Harry Potter, and Scream. Like that those three series yeah. were my background noise. Scream so was like, like a cultural phenomenon. That shit was huge. Imagine yeah. you a movie comes out and then all of a sudden that is the number one Halloween costume for ever. Ever. Yeah. Like everybody like kids today are buying that. Yeah, which I don't know if you know. I mean, we talked about uh, this on uh, a different show, but it skyrocketed caller ID to be a normal thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can thank a horror movie from 96, I think, for that. From 1996. Mm. Also. That that was that early? 96, really? Yeah, I think it's in 96. I'm going to fact check. You, You about to Google me? All right, mm-hmm. Drew gonna fact check me, but anyways, um, I didn't know if I don't know if you know about this either, Drew. You're right. But they're doing a sequel, Scream Five, my dude. Damn, I know. Apparently, all original they cast did. that are still alive are coming. Screw they did a Scream Four recently with the y- your girls Hayden, right? Oh yeah, I'm gonna let you in on something. Hayden didn't make it. Hayden didn't make the cut. Hayden didn't make it through, so she ain't gonna be in Scream Five. <laughs> oh, oh! She she made the cut, but she didn't make the cut. Yeah, no, she made. <laughs> she the actually cut. made the cut. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was almost one of the last. She might have been the last. I gotta watch Scream. I last. didn't watch Scream Four. Was it good? Scream Four is great. It's really good. Uh, I didn't watch it. I think it's on. It's on something right now, like uh, Prime Video, maybe. All right, I'll check it out. I Scream Four is awesome. Like straight up. Mm-hmm. It um, it does all the right things for a sequel that was like, I think damn near a decade after the third one. So yeah, which uh, there's another movie that the writer of Scream did in between those movies, in mm-hmm. between three and four, that is so weird, and I can't remember what it is, but go look up that dude and go check out that movie. It's so weird, but like mm-hmm. so original. It's super cool. All right. Anyways, that's my uh, horror icon. You know, ghost so face. Screen. Ghost face. I ghost had to glow in the killer. dark. You know, I had that glow in the dark. Did you have to glow in the dark? Ghost face. Yeah. I think. Did you? You remember the ones you could squeeze and the the blood would f- flow down the face? Mm-hmm. Yep. That was weird. That was mm-hmm. super weird. You had one down, huh? No, I think I had a normal one. I don't um, know. Scream. 96. I I'm I'm with you on that. Scream, definitely. Uh, cultural like it changed it changed it changed horror movies uh Mm -hmm. it's definitely its own its own thing yeah Um, i love it that west cravens though that west cravens Cravens. see that i know r.i.p um funny thing an old professor oh not a professor of ours but a an alumni of our undergrad Mm -hmm. was his driver on scream two or three Mm. yeah pretty cool shout out to her um but yeah dude i love that movies i'm so bummed i think it was supposed to come out this year or shoot this year mm-hmm. but it got delayed a year because covid oh yes. so it's a bummer you know mm-hmm. love that shit um but that's my horror icon you know what i'm saying it's good it's a good yeah, one yeah i mean i would have oh. to say you know freddie or Oh, Freddy that's or, what I was uh, gonna say. Actually, Mike Myers. Um, yeah, yeah. So Freddie, 
Um, speaking of Wes Cravens, you know, well, then we're then Wes Cravens right? though. Wes Cravens. Um, how did did you? What was your experience the first time you saw Freddy Krueger? The first one, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um. Well, I didn't see the first one until later on in life. Is that Johnny Depp's? That Johnny Depp's was in yeah. it. Remember that? Yeah. Johnny Depp's his, um, his first roles. Uh, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I want to say because like but it wasn't really my first introduction to Freddy himself, but mm. it was the first time I watched one of those movies and understood what was really going on because I think I remember seeing clips and things and like whatever little bits as a kid. But yeah. when I watched it, I remember thinking, man, th- as someone, and I mentioned this in a previous episode, as someone who has sleep paralysis or like someone who gets, oh, you know, the nightmares be real, son. They be real. Uh, yeah. I feel like I might not have slept that night, you know, mm-hmm. which is what that is supposed to do. That movie is supposed to do that shit. Oh, for sure. Um, I've mentioned it before, but yeah, obviously I'm a Wes Craven fan. In the green box behind me, um, for all you video viewers, uh, I do have the Nightmare on Elm Street collection. I I bought it a long time ago. Probably, actually, hot take. I told you guys I'm going to have some hot takes on this. Mm -hmm. Uh, Probably at a... At like a blockbuster video when they're Oof. closing. That's a that's a real hot take. Yeah, so there's your hot take from that one. Um, I probably bought actually I probably bought a lot of movies back at those kind of things. Yeah. You know when they were closing, video mm-hmm. games, all sorts of shit. But um, I can't wait for for that for that to come out. Scream Five, can't be wait. Good. Be good. I actually shout out to a Quiet Place too. Oh, he likes that. Yeah, did you like it? I did. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very original. Yeah. For what it was. Oh, but anyway, yeah. um, that shit got delayed too in twenty twenty one. So. Yeah, I was like, "Hey, we'll make a sequel to that shit," but they did. Uh, they did, and it's technically like a prequel sequel. It's kind of interesting. Is John Krasinski back, back in there? Yeah, Krasinski is in there. You know, Krasinski. You know, my boy Jim in there. <laughs> Bro, he just Jim. he just living that shit, that life, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel oh, like... Dude, dude, he's hit after hit after hit lately. And I feel like, you know, for somebody who has thought, you know, like, oh, maybe I'll take acting as a career, thinking about being called something for the rest of my life or, like, doing a role that, like, whatever, that I, everyone has to bring up, like, oh, do this, do that. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like for that dude because like he is known for Jim, but I'm telling you, man, the boy, he holds it up. Like he's like, yeah, man, Jim, that made me who I am. So, and he's yeah. like all chipper and happy about it, which I'm I'm glad because I mean, like you hate when you see those people like that, you know, who are sure those actors who are just like don't I'm not gonna do that anymore. Oh, I know, and it's like, you know, shout out to these people like like uh. John Krasinski and Rain Wilson and these people that like know that that is like the that's a mile marker in their their career you know mm-hmm. it's like if you say anything about this character like they were on that show and you've been on shows before that have taken their own life where like your crew is your family you know at that time yeah. so yeah you if you're together doing a show for a decade like come on man like you're closer than close. Yeah. So if he's not Jim and if Rain Wilson's not Dwight, I don't know what the fuck's going on in the world, you know. <laughs> blessings a blessings to Drew. <laughs> you know I had to step away from the mic. You know sneeze. he did a little girly sneeze too. Bless No, nah, it was a no- it was a normal ass manly a sneeze. Baby, that was baby a manly sneeze. sneeze. Oh. <laughs> oh, um so it's a uh, we're we're going to switch gears but we wanted to give a shout out to um, Corinne, I think that's how you say, or Corinne, probably Corinne at Wiseacre in Ooh. Memphis, Tennessee. Why are we shouting her? Um, out? Yeah, so um, we've told, we've said before that we're trying to do positive things on this show, and giving uh, your business to Wiseacre would be a positive thing right now because they took a hit. Um, we've been in contact with Corinne about this, and they. Uh, they took a hit during 
the first close down of COVID. So um, if you can reach out to them, uh, I think you can order online and pick up at the at the brewery at their tap room. That's so a Memphis uh, Brewery. Yeah, Memphis Brewery. If you're in the area, if you're not in the area, drive there and go get it. Oh damn. Um, or demanding, yeah, do what you, you? got to do, man. You know, take a venture. You know, what do you got to do? You sitting at home, take an adventure. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Or you could anyway. you could purchase it and donate it to people in Memphis. You know what I'm saying? You could do that too. You, you could donate it something? to us, purchase it, and paddle you drive do that over there. Too. I would love that. You let's know just <laughs> let's just let's just get straight here. But yeah, I, I agree. That's uh, that's a yeah. good thing, positive thing. So, Corinne, you know, uh, we're shouting you out right now. Like, um, Wiseacre has. Uh, did I ever tell you about my Wiseacre? Uh, gotta get. Oh wait, what's the the gotta get down, gotta get down brown. Uh, g- uh, gotta get gotta up, get, get down, down brown. Yeah, gotta get up to get down. Yeah, did I tell you about my story of going to RP Tracks with that beer? I don't think so, bro. This is a funny ass story. Okay, did you get just, faded? I, I, I mean, I did, but it, that's not the story. Oh, so hold, was, on, hold on. Before you start a story. Oh hold come on. on, I just got in. I know, no, this is a good story. I know, I know, it's gonna be a good story. Cause it's got tracks. It's got near U of M. But hold on, take a one. I'm gonna take you a. Uh, I'm gonna get that uh, ASMR. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, here you go. They got a sip. Oh damn! No, he pulled the mic. Oh, he did down the beer guy. Anyway, before we go into the story about are we tracks and um, Drew getting faded, I said I wasn't gonna do it before, and uh, debatably shouldn't do it now. But shout out to you boys. Beer virus, <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? I'm still waiting for that call, boys. I'm still waiting. Love some beer tonight. Still waiting that double IPA. It's bye bye time. This is eight point two. It's about to go in the glass. Um, I actually uh, I got a text about this from a buddy of mine. Um, shout out to Dan. Uh, he actually bought this. I think because he probably heard it on the show and we showed it or whatever. We need so, to let um, them know. Yeah, no. So this, this is no. letting this is this is my verbal letting them know. Hey, we're we're pimping your shit. Let's come on, man. Let's <laughs> let's do the thing. I'm pimping your shit more than you right now. So uh, hold. Oh oh, should I do the crack on here? Go for it. Oh, you piss, huh? No, you just gotta do the crack and I'm gonna tell the story. Oh, that's good. That's a good crack. Hold on. Oh, damn. That's a that real was a crack. Good crack. That was a good crack. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go straight into so, Drew's story. All right. At the tracks. At the tracks. RP with tracks the Wiseacre. Was, RP Tracks was the college bar. That was like, it's right next to the college U of M. It's where we would go if there was nowhere else to go. <laughs> like, it really wasn't that popular for us. It was more like the frats and shit like that. Yeah. But uh, we went a few times, food was good or whatever. Anyway, I'm back visiting Memphis for a little bit. You know what I'm saying. Just It's just a little bit. Wiseacres mm-hmm. popping off. Wiseacres everywhere. 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 That got to get up to get down brown is one of the best beers I've ever put in my mouth. I, I will say it. I love it. It's great. All right. So, yeah. I go into RP Tracks. They got it on tap. I'm like, Perfect. I'm going in. I'm with my boy, Sam. We start to play pool over there in the back. We're playing pool. Waiter comes in. I want to get a, you know, I want to get that, got to get up to get down brown. <laughs> and so she's like, all right. So she brings me one. All right, drink it. As I have another one. You know, this is all in like a normal amount of time. We're playing for a while. Uh, by the third or fourth beer. And that's not a lot. It's fourth beer. It's not a lot. The yeah. waiter. I asked for another one. Asked for that fifth boy. You know, that fifth oh. boy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I asked for the fourth, and I can't remember. It wasn't, I just didn't it feel like it. It was the fourth for Drew. It was the fourth. <laughs> I asked for the fourth one, and she says, um, I don't think I can serve you anymore. And I was oh, like, wow. I was like, wait, what? I'm literally by my, you know, like with my friend by ourselves. Like, we're not making a scene. I'm not even acting drunk. Like, what? It, what's going on? And she's like, well, do you know that there's coffee in that? And I was like, I don't give a fuck if there's coffee in it. Like, what? That's I'm a not, good thing. Like, what yeah, it's saying? like, I'm not acting drunk. I'm not acting like, you know, like, why are you 
cutting me off. Like I've never been cut off. I'm I can never drink enough to get cut off. Like why would you no. ever cut somebody like me off? Because it I get sick. I get sick before I get belligerent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So she ended up giving me another one, and it wasn't a big deal. But I was just thinking like, damn, that's the first time a waiter's ever tried to cut me off. And it was because a beer had coffee in it, not because I got too drunk. <laughs> I was like, okay. So she didn't want you to shit your pants, basically. Basically. I don't know what she wants. She just trying to have some control in her life. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to RP I mean, Trash Waiters. Yeah, I mean, you know, they don't got no control. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the positive things. <laughs> Shout out to control. Oh, shit. <laughs> No, isn't that the truth though? Uh, man, Banks be fucking up right now. He trying to get in his lap. It's not even working. Damn, uh, Binks <sighs> that that black cat over there. Black cat. He just woke up. His ass been sleeping all day. Old fat ass boy. Old fat been Reap. sleeping all day, and now he want attention, and he's not gonna get it. No, right now, because I'm doing something. You know, what I'm saying. You're so, busy right um, now. I wish I had some caught. You know. This I, I think about this like every now and then, but like I don't have any college type stories like that. You, you uh, know why? All. I know why. Um, it's because you know I worked at night when I was going to school, so I don't have any of those type of things. But like, I feel like I definitely um, there was a year, uh, a year when I moved <laughs> to old old Los Angeles. Where I think I made up for all four of those years <laughs> in one go, um, and I, and like Drew said, I'm persistent, so I'm gonna work. I'm gonna go after it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think you can contest. I I uh, definitely did. You know what I'm saying? You did your thing. And that's mm-hmm. all that matters. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, but yeah, I don't know. I definitely got after that year. I don't know. You came out. You were did you you came out when I was living alone, huh? <laughs> Let's rephrase that. <laughs> I came to Los Angeles. I, I didn't come so out. So Drew came out when uh, <laughs> when I was living in LA. You it was it first, was enlightening guys. for him. Um, I was getting a little wild. But I want to tell you about a little wild story. I'm Does saying. this involve when I came to LA? No, no, this has right. nothing to do with LA. Okay, go ahead. Um, so. Oh shit! Hold on, hold on one second. One sec. One sec. We're gonna cut this out. Sorry, Drew. Damn, you're making so much work for me. I'm sorry. Let's do this. Um, tell me when you're ready. Ready. All right. So I'm gonna hit you up with this story. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with you being in LA or me being in LA. It has to do with, um, so it's COVID-19, right? It's 2020. Mm-hmm. We've been taking precautions like crazy. We decided to go stop by a friend's house, okay. um, recently. And on the way to said friend's house, it had been raining throughout the day, right? A little rain here and there. It's summer rains, you know what I'm saying? So we're driving, um, and I stop at this red light, and guess what happens? I'm mm-hmm. stopped. Guess what happens? You get bumped? Yes. Oof. Your boy gets bumped. And I'm going to let you in on something right now about your boy, Pat Artis. There is nothing. Mm-mm. On earth, mm-hmm. that makes me more furious in no time. Like, if there was a button that said "set this motherfucker off" right here, that's the button. That that is it. Oh, bruh, I'm telling you right now, the majority of anything bad that's ever happened to me in a car has been getting rear-ended. Mm. Had <clears throat> when I was go- when we were going to U of M. Got rear-ended. My car was totaled. Missed a midterm. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the rain. In the rain. Got rear-ended on on the 101 in LA on the highway. 
Mm. by like a steel fucking truck. Nothing happened to this thing. Mm -mm. Yeah, crushed my trunk, had to get it all redone. Dude was a tweaker, blah, blah, blah. It's happened, dude, bruh. Got rear-ended when I got to Nashville. Bro, this happens to me all the time. Got rear-ended when we got to Nashville by an old man. Old, old man. Oh, shit. In like a big old, big old boat of a car, right? You know, old man car. Mm -hmm. This dude didn't even get out the car. He, bro, I'm telling you, I, I, when I get hit, when I get rear-ended or something, or something bad happens in the car, right? Knock on wood. Um, straight up, I'm like, like the fucking fire at night, it like ignites mm-hmm. inside me. Like I am so mad instantly. I got out this car ready to kill a motherfucker. And I saw this man was 90 goddamn years old. Got them shades on with the shits on the side. So he didn't even get sun in from any direction. Mm-hmm. He wasn't getting the sun. You know, this man cracks his window. Doesn't even roll it down. Cracks. He goes, everything okay? Oh, I said, no. I said, mother right here. <laughs> Anyways, so that was that time. Flash forward to this time when I get rear-ended. Keep in mind, COVID-19 happening. Right. I don't want to be in there, nobody, you know. Mm-hmm. Nashville kind of like getting to be a hot spot again. Here we go. This person gets out the car. I'm fucking furious instantly. Okay. Cause like, this is a, keep in mind, this is like one of the, probably the first, one of the first times I've been out to go see another human. That's not my wife. Long time. She's in the passenger seat. I fucking flip, right? Ooh. I'm furious. Oh, right. Furious. This person gets out the car and I see them walking up in the rear view. I crack mm-hmm. open the door, yell at them. I'm like, Put on a fucking mask. Didn't have a mask on. Close the door. I get my mask, all my shit ready. You know, driver's license, insurance stuff, all that bullshit for accidents. Get out the car. Here's where it gets crazy. I For for the listeners, I have not told Drew about this. Um, so I get out the car. I go look at the bumper. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing. Ooh. I was like, damn, got me a tough car. Here we go. The person gets out of the car. It is a. All right. So I'm going to try to be as uh, gentle as I can. Oh, he better and, be uh, not gentle at all. And some nice as as nice as I can he about how to describe this human. So it, I would say a middle aged uh-huh man okay with f- fishnets no no stop. a bra no 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 and a little like jacket that you would put over like a like a dress at prom uh-huh. one of those and like red heels on with with a shoulder length blonde wig this man gets out the car (laughs) and yeah well i I, all right so all right so my my fury goes from you fucking hit my car and i'm in it and i'm pissed to hold on what what all right (laughs) You know, like, because uh, I'm trying to, like, I, for work, I had to just do, this is kind of topical to me for my personal life, because recently I had to do um, sensitivity training mm-hmm. to different um, types of lifestyles and um, sexual identities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, which is, you know, everyone should probably do, honestly, these days. But this was a real life circumstance where I was furious from the start and had to mm-hmm. deal with something that related to that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck. Now, this is interesting. Right? 
It is. Because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being drag. Nothing. There's nothing wrong with having a different identity as far as your gender goes. Not at all. Uh, but if you hit somebody's car, it don't matter if you got fishnets. It don't matter if you nope. got George, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Nope. It don't matter if you got... <laughs> <laughs> it don't matter if you got a blonde wig. It doesn't matter if you have a blonde wig. <laughs> uh, so, it, what, what happened? All good? So... Um, this person was super nice. Um, so the, the point of the story is throw all of your, um, your judgments and, um, personal bias out the window before mm-hmm. judging somebody, right? That's the point of the story because what happened was, um, to be fair, this person did not look well, Okay. Mm. um unfortunate yeah not not fortunate at all like to it to, and to be for real for real could have very well and i'm not trying to make any judgments here but like could have very well been like a lady of the night mm. I for real that. like it his body type um mannerisms the way the speed at which this dude talked Mm-hmm. was very in a less um sensitive way cracky you know oh, damn. so um but yeah so um he was like yo can we pull in this uh this gas station next door i'm not comfortable sitting in this meet in this like middle lane and i was like you know what it's slick outside we we probably should so we pull in this gas station do the whole insurance tag thing. He's like, yo, I just paid up my insurance. We're good. You know, if you have to file a claim, this whole thing. I was like, you know what? It's slick out. You know what? You just, everything is cool with the car. You have a good day, man. You know, you take it easy. It's okay. Everything's fine. You did a good thing. You did a good thing. It probably would Even though my initial reaction was pure rage. Yeah. Yeah. Pure rage. You know, what's funny is... So you started mentioning the very first thing that you saw, which was fishnets, wig, all that stuff. And my yeah. first reaction is, oh, no, because you described, you first called them a man. And I was thinking mm-hmm. like, oh, no, because not because I can't see a man wearing these things, because obviously, I mean, anybody can wear anything, doesn't matter, whatever you identify yeah, yeah. with, whatever. But the first thing that I'm thinking of is like, all of the feelings that you feel, all of the hatred that you feel, is now uh, compromised. Because if you feel hatred towards someone who is different than you, it is it is it's obviously it's not right. And yeah. so and so now you have to reevaluate. Okay, wait, this person has this situation, you know. And this is I f- I feel like it's a weird thing that we talk we have to talk about because. Uh, you know, you should be allowed to be mad at anybody, whatever, da 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 da, but not because of who they are, not because of what they dress like, but well, like if they rear end you, you know, they rear end yeah. you. That's that's the thing. Well, that's the thing. That's why I actually, actually want to go back on this. It's see the fury ignited in me because I was rear ended, of course, and me getting out of the car and seeing the thing, I was still mad, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And seeing this person, and I call him a man because he didn't there was no correction there was no no introduction i don't know the gender identity yeah. whatever so um it wasn't that i was not mad mm-hmm. um because of how this person looked mm-hmm. like i wasn't judging them on that i saw the car and i was relieved at first i was like oh nothing happened yeah like this is cool. So immediately, a lot of that was, um, a lot of that like anger was released from my body, right? Mm-hmm. I was relieved. So after that, though, I saw this person come out of the car and I said, wow, okay, well, this person's not in a good state. Like, they're not... Yeah. 
Like I'm not like I understand how much insurance not being able to pay your insurance could f- mm-hmm. really fuck your life up. So I I think maybe in my brain maybe my empathy or whatever kicked in and was like nothing's wrong here just fucking let it go. You know? Yeah. Like it's it's cool. But like at the time right pure rage, dude. Pure rage. Speaking mm-hmm. of pure rage Oh, shit. I got a new one for you. Oh, it hit me with it. All right. So this is Golden Road Champango. Yeah. This is a mango cart beer as inspi- and inspired by mimosas. Ooh. So uh, this alcohol content is a 6.5. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and check one up for you. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. I'll yeah, tell you, I'll tell uh, you how it is. and it's a sixteen ounce too. Is it? no? Looks like it. It's a skinny boy. Skinny. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know what. That's a twelve. This it's attention little... pleases fire, by the way. Just like, really funny you now. Mm. Oh, that's too delicious. Uh, that's so not good. Let's get into our um, last topic of the show. Before we hit to your first quick sip. All that shit rhymed. You didn't even know. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, so, we're probably not going to... We're not going to hit a little thing on this one. Because we want to introduce our new segment, Quick Sip, later on. But um, we wanted to touch on a little thing uh, that is impacting the industry that we both... Well, Drew currently works in and I used to work in. Straight to video on demand. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I've taken advantage of this. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, how do you feel about it? I. It is strange, and it's not not strange from the fact that I work in the industry, but it's strange because I remember back when. You know. You started learning about movies. If a movie was released in theater, it was a popular movie or big movie. But if it was yeah. wasn't released in movie, I mean, in a theater, it was uh, considered a B movie or like not that great, you know? Yeah. And um, it's it's crazy to think. First off, think about Netflix, right? Netflix started mm-hmm. creating their own content, started making their own movies, and some of them were actually good. And I was like, oh, oh, shit. Now these big superstars are going to do movies for Netflix. They're going to go straight there. And it's like basically turning the industry on its head like, oh, shit, what are we supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Um, so all of these major motion pictures that were supposed to come out now coming out on video on demand because of COVID is um, is great. It's a quick reaction time, you know, because if they don't make these moves, they're going to lose a lot of money, you know, because yeah. they movie theaters are not open right now. And I feel like while we're not getting the same experience as we would have, if we are going to the theaters, we're getting to see movies before their time is up because some of these movies that are being made that aren't art house, that aren't like these powerful movies that we're going to remember from time, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to watch from time to time. Like, these movies need to be seen as soon as they're made. Otherwise, they're dust. Irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Irrelevant. Yeah. That's the perfect word for it. Uh, like I said before, I don't know if it's this, uh, this episode or a previous one, but you know, I like to be entertained. I don't necessarily yeah. need to see a movie to, that makes me think all the time. Like sometimes, especially working in the industry as an editor, as a DP, as a as a filmmaker, yeah, I will focus so much on the technical aspects of a film that I'll I'll drive myself crazy and I had to train myself to just say fuck it and just be like no nah, I'm just gonna watch this and just enjoy it because I'm not a pretentious asshole you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. um so I think that it's a it's a great thing that that the studios recognized what they needed to do pretty quickly and and show their movies on video on demand um and it makes me think like this is exa- actually this is exactly what happened to tv too 
when Netflix came out, when 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 movies were started releasing on on DVDs and then streamed and then all of a sudden Hulu and all these movies and now our favorite shows were produced by Hulu or Netflix or HBO Mm -hmm. like and they're made for those platforms you know HBO straight up just like all right fuck it you know I, I know they still have their broadcast channel but like tell me how many Game of Thrones you watch on actual TV HBO zero that's because you're watching hbo go you watch an hbo max whatever it's called now and it is it is with the times fuck we're all mm-hmm. on devices you know what i'm saying we're not yeah. we're not going out we're not doing things we're on our devices so mm-hmm. it's it's uh yeah it makes sense yeah man biggest regret in my life i think not well financially um back in the day <clears throat> i was when we were in college is when Netflix really got popping yeah. and you could have like an account where you could stream certain things. So to the listeners that may be a little bit younger, there was a time when you could not stream everything that Netflix right. had. All right. And we've talked about it before, but internet just didn't support that shit back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like it was, you had to be like in a high, a place where internet was like, a high functioning internet area, I guess, would be the yeah. way to say it, right? Like okay. university, something like that. Yeah. And um, like most homes didn't have like the internet that could support Netflix. And now everyone does, right? Also, back in the day, you could you had a Netflix queue where you would get DVDs sent to you, right? Yeah. Biggest regret in my life, dude. So. When that was happening, I was like, man, I was having an argument with a friend of mine. I was like, man, this shit is the future. Like right now, this shit right here is the future. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're going to get whatever you want, whenever you want it. And like, it's, it's amazing, you know? Um, And this dude was like, nah, man. (laughs) Nah. Oh, hater ass. You know this person. Um, and he was like, nah, man. It's not the way. Like, you might have this red box shit where you can go rent. Like, And I'm telling you, at this point, Blockbusters, uh, all those other home video places were shutting down. Like, none of this yeah. stuff was ha- like viable. Yeah. Because Netflix had just kind of walked into this this area and been like yeah. yo this is ours now yeah and blockbuster was slowly shutting down slowly shutting down uh hollywood video was another uh mm-hmm. rental place shut down before blockbusters did and i remember having this conversation with this dude like yo no netflix is the is it like it's the next thing and mm-hmm. he's like nah and i swear to you i wish if i could go back in time I would throw so shares. much money at Netflix stock. Yeah. So much money. Every paycheck I got, half of that shit. Netflix. Yeah. Fucking stupid. There's a, there's a couple of those. I actually recently bought Netflix shares. Or you did? Least, just a little. Like, not not enough to even... It's not it's not that much. But anyway, it, it has gone up significantly since. So it's still going up. But they have potential to grow, just like Amazon. Dude, I bought crazy. I bought a share of Amazon at eighteen hundred dollars. This one share is eighteen hundred dollars, which is a lot. It is a lot. You know what that stock is right now? Twenty three, probably. Three thousand. My dude, <laughs> bro, Matty it's, boy, it's sell him. that shit. What's making the money? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying like yeah. Uh, those now as an adult those like intuitions that we have like you had for netflix yeah. we need to act on those like we need to act on oh, on that's what this show is yeah oh you that's acted on this, it real quick i acted on it i told you i said hey i'm ready to do another thing yeah let's do it if there is a reason there's a reason that we started the show back again this is it. 
So yeah. like the things that we shouted out with Corinne and Wiseacre, that's the reason that we're starting mm-hmm. the show. So yeah, man, uh, I guess follow up to the end. Well, like to end out the story, I guess it's like, yeah, follow, follow those intuitions. Cause, uh, mm-hmm. it's probably follow your gut, you know? Yeah. It's probably a good thing at the end of that. Um, so right now, do you got anything else to say on that? No, I, I, I love that. Follow, follow your instincts, your intuitions, like, you know, yeah. follow that gut. I feel as like as it grows from these beers, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my, <laughs> you can see mine. You can't even see yours. Let me see yours. You don't want to see mine. All right. You good? You oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I was gonna say is um, that's a good way to end it. I mean, honestly, you're right. This is what you wanted to do. We said it from the very beginning when we were in that Buffalo Wild Wings, and I made you record it. It was like, you oh, really want to do this? Do it. Like, stop talking about it. Stop. You know, like, just fucking do it. And um, I feel like that's that's the way. You know, that's a way to a rewarding life. You know, mm-hmm. because what does it matter if this show doesn't do anything? What does that matter if whatever, like you, you tried Don't it, you did shit. it, like yeah. it's 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 all about that uh, so that that you know climate. You're you grabbing for it, man. Just yeah, yeah. No, that's the thing. It's like um, that's the thing though. Is like I honestly I wanted maybe it's because I missed you. Maybe it's because I missed the Ooh. show. No, maybe it's me. both. Oh yeah, bro, miss me all the time. But it's like, there's a thing, um, there's a thing to be said about doing something that you like, and doing it because, for like, for like pure reasons, you know, mm-hmm. like I honestly have fun doing the show. So yeah, um, even if, you know, sometimes, like I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real. Like the first two episodes, we were not in our flow. You know, mm-hmm. like it just wasn't, it wasn't the thing. It wasn't there yet. Yeah. Episode three, that flow was there, you know, yeah. it, it happened. Something ignited it back. Like, but that, that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And, and I think you're saying too, is like, um, if you have an idea or if you have something you want to do, it's just going to eat at you until you jump and go for it. And I don't like that feeling, so I want to do it. Mm. So you should do it. Whatever you, you should do it. You can yeah. do it. Anyways, um, that's gonna end this episode. And you know, it's been your boys. It's been your boys. <laughs> it's been Pat your artist boys. Drew Pasley. This is happy hour. Quick Sixer Podcast. We out.